Yes, welcome to the 2023 New England Summer Summit. We are so happy to have you all here. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, uh, it would be nice if folks could, if your names are like the name of your library or your department or something, it'd be really great and helpful if you could just make that your name. Feel free to include your pronouns if you want to, but nobody is required to do that. And your state, we'd love to know where everybody's coming from. Um, also, um, Captions are available for anyone who needs them. If you toggle to the bottom of your um, your toolbar on Zoom, you are able to turn those captions on and off at will. Whether you're here on track one or track two, if they're useful to you, turn them on. If they're distracting to you, turn them off. We are recording all of the sessions today. So there are some times where two sessions are happening at the same time. Just pick one. You will get the recordings um, once this is all over, once we have everything processed, up to uploaded, um, your designated state consultant will send them to you however they send things to you in your state. Um, and with that, we're going to introduce ourselves before we get started. My, we're going to go in alphabetical order. My name is Kim Poe. I am the Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library. Hello, Connecticut and anyone else who's here. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Clara Ryman. I'm the Youth Services Specialist for the Maine State Library. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. I am Anna Pop. I'm one of the consultants on behalf of the Massachusetts Library System and my colleague, Christy Showman farrar Welcome. Good morning, everyone. I'm Deborah Dutcher. I'm from the New Hampshire State Library, where I'm the Library Services Consultant. And welcome to the Summer Summit. Hi, I'm Danielle Margarita. I'm the Youth Services Coordinator at the Rhode Island Office of Library and Information Services. And hello, I'm Emily. Uh, I am the Adult Services Coordinator for the Rhode Island Office of Library and Information Services, and we're so excited that you're here. Sorry, Emily, I jumped the gun. <laughs> I am Jonathan Clark, and I am the Youth Services Consultant from the Vermont Department of Libraries. Welcome to all of you. Welcome New England. And we are gonna get started. Um, a, a suggestion that came in from Jonathan to get us kicked off um, a summer program and idea swap. Jonathan, do you wanna explain how that goes? And I'm happy to grab the Padlet and drop it in the chat. Yes, thank you. Um, so we, Hopefully you, if some of you hopefully had a chance to look at the Padlet that's being popped in there right now. Um, there's a bunch of different topics in there. Um, some of them still need some, some content. Um, and uh, we hope that this is something that you can, um, if you haven't added to, you can start to add to it even right now. You can take a look at um, what folks have put in there. And then this is also something that you will continue to have access that people can um, add to after the um, Summer Summit as well. So it can be a, a continuing resource. Um, and let's see if I, if I can screen share, I can pop it up for a minute to um, can find the right thing. And for the new folks who are just coming in, I'm going to drop the Padlet link in the chat one more time. <clears throat> One of the things that we've learned over doing, this is our third year for Summer Summit. It started with just uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. And then we thought, why not invite the rest of New England? Because sharing is caring. Um, but we, oh, Middletown, Rhode Island, that's so funny. There's Middletown, Connecticut too. Um, but we thought, um, and we've heard in some of the evaluations at the end of our sessions that folks find value in learning from folks from other states, kind of new brains and new ideas. And so when we were um, deciding what we wanted 2023 to look like, Jonathan had this really great idea to um, provide a space where folks could share content ideas, right, Jonathan? Yeah, exactly. Um, and we've, we, 
in Vermont, we've kind of done a, something similar the last couple of years um, with the with the Jamboard. We kind of like took time to all sort of work in it, um, and it's kind of a nice way where people can add contribute in the way that they would like. Um, and again, you can also write nice comments on other people's um, posts as well. Um, if you again, if you wanted to to share, if it's a, especially like a very specific program, and you wanted to share like what library it is, and if people want to reach out to you, that's something you can do as well. Um, you certainly don't have to. Um, it's already exciting. To, I already see way more stuff in here than I saw an hour ago when I looked at it, so that's exciting. Um, so again, it's it's pretty simple. Um, they uh, thanks to Kim for helping with some of the format of this that we just switched up. So there's a bunch of um, uh, sections here of different questions and different things related to summer reading that you can add. And so it's all the topics you can scroll across and see everything that's there. Um, and there's a, there's a few different ways to add, but I would suggest if you wanna add, I would just, um, you can just click the section that you want, and then you can just add a post, and then you can add um, text, images, links. Um, I have I have one I was going to add I think somewhere. Mm -hmm. I have too many things happening on my screen. I can't see what's going on. But I think I just added something, a goat yoga link I to outdoor programming. Okay. Yeah, I saw, <laughs> that was I the saw, intention. I saw the lady in like plank or whatever it is. Man, yoga is hard. People who say that's easy, I do not have the arm strength for all of that. <laughs> yeah, but do you think would the goat help or would it, it, it might inspire you? I, I, I haven't I'm actually tried goat goats? yoga. I have to say, I have not tried goat yoga. Oh, you're can scared of have, goats. Yeah, can we have work. puppy puppy yoga? I think that would be great. I don't know if I, I would yoga or if I would play. I honestly think for puppy yoga, it's it's way more of a distraction. They're just going to lick your face. Like you have to really be focused <laughs> for that. They're just going to like- yoga with my dog and I can tell you it is not helpful. Yeah, no, it's not <laughs> helpful. It's like, I think it's like a neck level. You have to be like really like- in the zone in order to like do that. So I see we've um, got someone in the chat who asked a question um, about the Padlet screen. Is there a way to zoom in or adjust the screen so we can more easily view the variety of content? So the way that this um, this particular Padlet is set up is so that all of the headings are across the top. So I mean, I think Jonathan can zoom in a little bit, but it's actually just going to shrink the amount of stuff that you're able to see. Um, so if you actually want to click on the link, but I know that might make things difficult um, having multiple screens. Um, you're actually able to use the slide bar at the bottom and slide side to side to see all of the things that people have shared. Um, oh, that was from last year, right? How mm -hmm. to incorporate Zoom, yeah. Um, so the thing about this Padlet and why we've put it in the Google for the Google Sheet is so that folks are able to utilize it as they continue their summer planning. Um, so it's okay if, um, you know, if, if, you know, we can't like zoom in exactly now. Um, but is there anyone who has something that they want to share in the Padlet or that they've already shared that they might want to verbalize a little bit? Um, I'm happy to say that from Connecticut, I say from Connecticut, but I actually stole it from Iowa first. Um, I shared uh, a link. I know some folks like to use paper tracking for summer. That's particularly helpful in a lot of our small communities here in Connecticut. Um, first Iowa, and then I uh, created a bunch of Canva templates for a variety of tracking systems, a bingo board, a bookmark, a little game board for teen services, and it's an 
open template that anyone can go in. They can change the art to match their summer reading theme. They can change the little, the words and the bingo board to maybe acclimate better to what works in your community. Um, but we just thought we'd sort of get the day started sharing out. Yeah. So what I was thinking that, so what we can do is we can, um, and folks can continue to add to this if you'd like um, right now. That's that's totally fine. And then I think what we can do is I can share a slideshow of what is currently there. Um, and then we can all just sort of like talk, like uh, look at each topic. And if there's things that anyone wants to, um, if anyone wants to, to chime in um, on any of, of the topics as we go through, um, then that would be great. We'll just sort of uh, see if we can, uh, Get some great ideas going. Share some of these awesome. Uh, all right, sorry. Let me see if I can get this. So I think this will capture what is in there as of whenever I hit the share button there. So I already I I uh, um, did see a couple of great things um, in there today about takeaways from previous summer reading. Um, again, talking, you know, goat yoga and outdoor programming. I know that that has been um, something that has come up a lot, um, certainly in Vermont, but I think it seems like all across New England of of the success of summer programs, especially coming out of COVID and everything else, where it's somewhat necessity, but then also just finding um, just a lot of success with with offering programs, outdoor programs at the library, but then also in community spaces and, and with partners too. So if anyone, again, if anyone wants to chime in on any of these specific ones, they want to add anything. I can't really see the chat right now, but um, Oh, sorry, Jonathan, we can, on it. yep, we're still sharing the Padlet. Um, someone uh, made a really lovely comment in the chat. Um, how are people incorporating the theme of all together now slash unity into their library programming or decor? Yeah, and that, and I I do have to say that that I did not include anything about themes on here. There, the, the New England Library, there are um, some libraries that are using CSLP, some are using I read some libraries do their own thing. So I, I didn't have anything specific about theme on here. And that was kind of purposeful as we were planning this, we sort of talked about it being like non-denominational <laughs> summer, summer reading discussion. Um, but we know that there, there are things. So that feel free to, to include that in any of these categories. Um, but there, there, it wasn't, there wasn't anything that was broken down that way purposely. Yeah. I, I'd like to comment from um, Middletown, Rhode Island. Is that okay? Yeah, please. Okay, great. So I'm really excited about a program that we're doing through um, uh, iRead and it's Find Your Voice and we're doing podcasting. So I bought <gasps> all the equipment to do this. So we're taking- Oh, that's so cool. From adult, we're doing genealogy, your Rhode Island story. And we're hoping to uh, create podcasts for that, put it on our website, but we've also partnered with StoryCorps which we hope that uh, their stories will live a little longer and are uh, reach across the country. Um, we also put it in teens and the theme is <clears throat> what this world needs now. I put it in the Padlet. We're starting out with Dress Coded, which um, in that book, um, the main character has a podcast about dress coding and we're hoping that the teens get really, they're very excited about this to have a voice to say this isn't right. So their theme is what this world needs now and that'll be a weekly podcast from teens. And for children, we're gonna take the podcast and do it intergenerational where the grandparents, I have a lot of grandparents and kid programs. We're gonna like, when I was a kid, I used to play with, or when I was in school, we did this. So there's kind of this conversation, again, all leading back to StoryCorp and putting- I love that. So Yeah, that's, that's really great. And, and especially that intergenerational aspect of, of really, and also just being able to have like, 
programs for specific age groups, but then being able to incorporate it across generations, that's really awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I also want to share uh, in 2021, our very first summer summit year, we had a lineup of libraries who have their own podcasts, um, who did a group session for us. If anyone is interested, they shared uh, information on tools that they used and sort of platforms and things. So I actually just dropped the link to the entire um, summer summit 2021 video slate. If you just scroll down, you'll see it in there for anyone who's interested in more info about that. Um, can I say something? Yeah, yes, please. Hi, I'm Tracy yeah. Joy. I um, live in Putney, Vermont, but I work up in Heartland, Vermont. Um, so I am going to be incorporating the theme because I think it's like a beautiful theme and it's something that's needed right now, I think, mm -hmm. in our communities. Um, I was thinking in terms of, um, I love the intergenerational um, idea coming from Rhode Island. I have an idea for programming. It's in its infancy, so it's not it's not yet planned out. But um, getting some interest from folks from a survey I did that they're interested in doing a skill share where the mm -hmm. younger kids teach some of the older folks and vice versa. Yeah, I love that. And I think especially in my community, like um, where where my library is, it's there's a lot of older folks and a lot of younger people. So. Um, there's not a ton of in between, so I was thinking of doing that. And also, I'm I'm the youth services librarian, and I was thinking one thing I could do is um, have those scrolls of paper where people draw um, a story, and then I hang it up, so it's like all together now. Like people are all working towards the a narrative in um, graphic format, and I would hang it up in the library. Um, I was also thinking of doing like those loops of construction paper that you join together as links and people mm -hmm. could share something positive about um, something that happened in their day or something that they liked about like about a friend or something like that and I'll hang it up all in the library. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's, that's really great. Um, I think that I, I just, I'm really excited about that, that there seems to be more and more of the intergenerational programming and seeing how we can link, um, you know, especially every time when we're thinking about, especially like children's programming or the literacy programming, it, you know, it, really young kids are not coming by themselves. Um, so there is somebody with them and if there's a way to capture and to include them and make extensions to to everyone who might be at those programs. I think that's that's fantastic. So thank thank you for sharing. And if you haven't yet, Tracy, if you can put that in the Padlet, even if it's something you haven't done yet, that's definitely one thing. It's just like this is something I want to try because um, again, that's that's part of it. Is we want people to share ideas, resources, but also like question like this thing hasn't worked. I don't know why. Um, I want to try this. So those are all things that you can include in there. We, um, hi, I'm Samantha and I'm in Connecticut hi. uh, and I collaborate with another local library because we live in a super rural area. So um, we kind of like put our resources together to put on summer reading and cross promote each other's programs, which has worked really well for us. Uh, it, it kind of works out because it's like they have a larger budget and more patrons, but I have more um, man hours and time to like <laughs> put into it. So um, I just wanted to share that because it's really cool to do some reading with local libraries instead of comp competing with other like like local libraries. Um, yes, and then, absolutely. Especially since like in where I'm in New England, it's like a bunch of tiny, like less than 2000 people towns all about 20 minutes away from each other. <laughs> so yeah. um, they each have their own library. But the other thing I wanted to share, I know it's kind of theme specific because specific we're doing all together now, but I've never done this before and I like it. We broke it down to some sub themes. So it's like the first week will be um, friendship and trust and then uh, theater music community and food and so for each week we're having like book displays based on that sub genre of theme and make and takes based on that sub genre of theme and then an event 
uh, also based off of that. And breaking it down that way has just been really fun. And I think that it's going to work well for the flow of the whole summer. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I, I um, again, I'm always excited to hear. I think we all are about collaborations too. It's, it's um, you know, some places are set up a little bit more with, with library systems and some places, um, Vermont, especially where there's a lot of independent libraries and there's in some cases less collaboration. In some cases, people feel kind of isolated, but um, we really like if, if you can find out what folks, other nearby libraries are doing, work with schools and really like put it out there and and you know collaborate it's um always exciting to hear so thanks for sharing i sorry oh, sorry <laughs> who's Why going we, no, we can do nicole <laughs> and then sarah uh, so I'm Nicole Vachon Hanlon. I'm at the Chittenden Public Library in Vermont. And um, last year we had a Spark grant in our community and we did a harvest festival at the end of the year in October, September, um, October. And uh, it was really well received. We had over 100 people. And so this year with the All Together Now, we are starting a seed uh, library. Um, to build towards um, harvesting and gardening and planting seeds of peace and um, good <laughs> feelings, camaraderie amongst our community. So we're actually going to do a few things throughout the summer related to that. And um, I just did that Winnie Bell grant, which it's do today, right? So if anybody hasn't done it yet in Vermont, that's something that's available. Um, yes. But I'm gonna. <laughs> Thanks for plugging that. <laughs> printing um, with all different ages uh, throughout the summer, where like adults will learn how to do it first, and then they'll teach it to the teens in the middle of the summer, um, and they'll make gift cards that will then do it Chittenden Day, which is like the big day that all the community comes together. And um, and then we'll do peace flags with the block prints that'll have, you know, there'll be vegetables and fruits and flowers. Um, so we're doing this artistic theme um, throughout, uh, but I think it really does help. I'm like working with McClure to maybe make nature journals with their book finding machine awesome. or figure out how we can secure one for our kids. Um, and then we also installed a peace pole last year. And that's a great thing for kids to get involved if you look at international peace polls. Um, and so the kids at the Barstow school that we're connected to had painted it, but now we're going to have a pollinator garden surrounding it. So we're going to have all these like themes of kind of connectivity all together now, planting, growing creatively in our community. So that's, that's awesome. the, the idea. So, yeah, well, thanks thanks um, for sharing, Nicole. Um, there was a question about, um, about how are you finding space for the seed library? So do you want to speak to like where sure. you have the library? Because so, I, I, I know I've seen some that <laughs> and are like I, I would love of, if anybody has yeah. um, done it before. I, I lived in Virginia before and they had a large room and we're a very small library. So I actually got a small five drawer card catalog, old one that we're going to retrofit just as our initial. And it just fits on top of um, our like, non-fiction section um but we're going to start it oh, with like that it. um and then it looks like if it gets really big we'll probably have to work with like the historical society or the master gardeners in the community um but right now that's what we're going to do to kick it off this um summer um and it's just one <laughs> seed one thread of the theme um but uh i have a committee a small committee that's doing that so we're gonna yeah, it's like that. Um, somebody, Laura, you just put it in. Um, and it's it's just, this is just five drawers. But yeah, I know Brandon did it. And there was actually, Jonathan, I was going to ask you, I saw that there was a grant that supports seed libraries that um, Brandon had applied to. And I don't know if that's something that's still available to communities. Um, but it was to help do that. Yeah, these are cool. So ours is a small um, card catalog. Yeah, so, I don't know, but I will have to find about that. I don't know about that specific grant. Yeah. I will see if, yeah, yeah, if 
find information um, about it. Uh, but yeah, I love the ideas in here. Boxes, like, that's a cool idea too. I know the cray crayon box is so, again, just like, so it could be so something so simple. Um, yeah, I, 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 I was just looking great. at if we couldn't find this little card catalog, which I found um, to like even anything with small drawers. Um, I have a person that told us the key thing is about you know, getting the seeds in and yeah, we would have some harvested from previous crops. Um, I'll gather them from people and we'll label them and then they'll be filed like an old card catalog, but somehow to have filing and then um, a checkout system where the idea is you don't return it, right? With those seeds, you return it with whatever you've grown, you bring back other seeds to share for the next, um, round which we're having the harvest festival in September so it'll be an opportunity last year we had produce from the community that people brought and people went home with free produce um so this year they'll also get to have seeds hopefully so awesome yeah. thanks so much for sharing that and there's all sorts of um I know awesome this is great things in the um, chat how can about... we get these things uh added to our Padlet, so we have well, hopefully because I know yeah, the chat hopefully if the people making doesn't always transfer. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Later. <laughs> yeah, well, I would encourage whoever's adding to the chat if you could also add it to Padlet. Um, but we can certainly try to capture what what we missed at some point. Um, but yeah, if you're adding it to the chat and it's not in the Padlet yet, we encourage you to put it in there. Um, again, you can sort of we can have a, a whole section on on seed libraries, which is awesome. Um, thanks, Nicole. I appreciate that. Is there anyone else who, um, oh, I'll just add this to, sorry, oh, yeah. to promote no story walks. We're kicking yeah. it off with the story that's related to it and awesome. putting a story walk up at our summer reading kickoff that will be related to it. And story walks are amazing. So if you haven't used them at all, people love them so much as a way to either for a day, a week, or a month that you have an, a self-guided literacy in nature opportunity. So um, yeah, that's awesome. I haven't decided what story yet. I've been working with Jonathan to see what's available because it's not until later in the in the summer. Um, but yeah, we'll yeah figure it out. if anybody has suggestions, um, we'll see. Cool. I'm seeing all sorts of cool things. So I'm going to get off now. I know. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, if you're looking for uh, an activity with um, vegetables and fruits, something I've done before is, um, what's it called? The Mr. Potato Head, but with the real fruits and veggies. And it's always been really popular. We've done it. Oh, um, I, I have not heard of that. That sounds awesome. It's very so how, fun. Can you talk a little bit about like how how that works like you really just bring in like you just frankenstein vegetables together is that yeah I, I, you can probably google and you'll find some examples um and so you can use toothpicks if you need to help hold it together but but typically i've just had enough variety that kids have been able to to put together their own creations that's awesome especially that seems like a good use of like um, like zucchini that people tend to have like a ton of like gigantic ones at the end of the summer. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that. Does anyone else have any um, anything they'd like to share? Um, Could I? From, um, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, please. So I got asked to talk a little about our theme this year. We're kind of doing our own thing. We are doing um, cultural carnival. Um, so I have a bunch of different stuff planned to try to cover a bunch of different cultures outside of our town is relatively small, but we are doing, um, for instance, a, a story time based on Palatero Man. So they're gonna be trying all different flavors of Palatas. And then we're also doing, um, Oh, sorry, what else we have here? Um, a K-pop and cake pops for the teens. Um, which I'm very much looking forward Love to. Myself. Um, we're doing a two-part. I mean, come on, festival. like paletas and K-pop. Come on. Yeah. Um, and we're doing um what I've called foodie Fridays. So, 
Um, I'm inviting different people from the community with different cultural backgrounds to teach the teens specifically how to cook. So I'm Greek, so I'm covering a Greek day. <laughs> um, and then I think we have somebody who's covering um, Chinese. So that'll be pretty interesting for us. Um, and then we also are doing um, something I'm calling anime and eats because we have a very a big interest in anime, <laughs> which I also have <laughs> a big interest in personally. So I'm going to go to um, H Mart and get them a bunch of different snacks that they can try. Um, Love it. And then we're also doing, um, we're, we're doing, we're celebrating Holly, but in a less them getting covered in paint and more them throwing the paint at um, canvases to make their own kind of like splatter art. And then awesome. we also are having somebody who's coming to do a circus around the world. So we'll get to see different like circus acts from different cultures. So cool. Thank you so much for sharing. And if you haven't already, all those pop all those things in the, in the Padlet. Morning, Jonathan. Uh, my name Morning. is Rick. I take just take a minute. Yeah. Okay. So I'm working with Deborah Dutcher up here in New Hampshire. Hi, Deborah. Uh, and just wanted to share that uh, there are two upcoming solar eclipses coming to the U.S. One on Saturday, October 14th of this year, which is only gonna be about 20, 25% here in the Northeast, normally wouldn't get a lot of big player coverage, but the fact that it's 177 days before a total solar eclipse that is coming to Northern New England, yeah. and will be pretty impactful, 90% or above throughout New England, also going through New York, it's really across North America. And so I'm working with libraries. Deborah has some information on the SEAL program, solar eclipse activities for libraries through Starnet. If anyone has a library telescope, the library telescope program is getting involved and uh, with the NASA solar eclipse ambassadorship that I'm involved in, we're working to target communities that are outside the path of totality. And if you're south of Montpelier, Middlebury in Vermont, south of Lancaster in New Hampshire, or south of Bangor in Maine, those communities all the way down through New England are outside the path of totality. And we're also working 50% of our presentations are for underserved communities. So the community that I'm sort of focusing on here in Concord, New Hampshire and beyond is the blind and visually impaired communities and we have sonification devices and tactile material from NASA all to help promote the eclipse. And the great thing about eclipses, is nobody owns them. So you can do yeah. whatever you want. And well, yet they're trying to put a patent on the moon but no one's done that yet. So we're good. And uh, they're intergenerational and they're fairly rare. The last one to come through in New Hampshire was in 1959, I was only Three months old, I missed that one. The next one to come to New Hampshire is 2079. Uh, chances of me seeing yeah, that's, that. Yeah, that's that's before. that's a ways. Got to wait a ways for that for a long time yep. for that one. So, uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate that, Rick. Um, we actually have there's a session at one o'clock today. Seal, some folks from Seal are are presenting um, resources um, on the the upcoming eclipses. So um, great, thank yeah. you, and. In my background now is the Eclipse Mobile. I'm working with oh, Seal yeah. <laughs> to yes. promote the Eclipse. I'll be up in Vermont at the Library Association, School Library Association Conference on Monday in Burlington. Oh, you are going to be there. Oh, awesome. Yep. I, are you going to have the Mobile? I will. I will. Uh, yes. Got to check it out. That's sick. Thank you, Jonathan. All right. Thanks. Appreciate folks sharing. Asked, this is fantastic. Oh yes. Someone asked a someone asked a question. How do you get SEAL training at your library? Uh, my understanding is they're going to every state here in New Hampshire. They're going to be on May 25th. I think there is a limited number of slots. I don't know the dates for them going to the other New England states, but I yeah. believe if you check with your state librarian, they should have that info. Yeah. We'll have that info. And I know that we're going to have one in Vermont that will be sending out information about 
probably next week um, about the, the training that we, that we are going to be offering. Um, so it, uh, and I know that I think a couple, maybe some of the states here already have had theirs too. I think, I know Maine is gonna be around the same time as Vermont, I think in May. Um, Ah, the eclipse glasses. Well, there's, there is, I think we can probably pop the link in there. I, my understanding is they may not, I, I don't know how many are more available. They've been available to order for a while at this point, but there, we can put the link, we can grab it. I think we can put the link in there. Um, and again, anyone who's super interested in this, um, encourage you to join the session. Um, uh, with um, Stephanie this this afternoon from Seal um, at one o'clock. Oh, thanks. Lots of good stuff in there. Is there anyone who wants to share anything else from any of the topics from the Padlet? Um, I appreciate folks folks sharing. Um, it's I. It's always inspiring to hear what everybody's doing. So in Rhode Island, we have a Reading Across Rhode Island committee, um, RARI, and we are taking the RARI book, which is True Biz, and we're combining it with our summer reading theme, which is Finding Your Voice. And I'm using Finding Your Voice and um, interpreting it as ways of communication. So we're going to have ASL story times. We're going to have awesome. two ASL story times, one for littles and one for what we're calling middle littles um, and um, kind of teaching people basic signs and um, and yeah and using our our two of our really big summer uh, programs so that's awesome and Leanne I don't I don't know if you mentioned it or not are you are you partnering with um, an organization for that or you are um, it is the, um, there, yes, we are, but I, it, I, the actual formal name, it's the ASL, um, it's a formal, it's the ASL that, of okay. Rhode Island, <laughs> but it is, it is something it is, in okay. Rhode Island, it is a formal company of, of Rhode Island. Um, that, who you're going to be working with for the, oh, yes, for the program. Oh yes, because nobody yeah. in the library actually knows um, the sign, and okay. we are very interested in also learning some basic signs um, ourselves, because we have people who come in and, you know, are, who are deaf and, and low hearing as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I've I've been involved in a few of those programs, and are it's very um, it's really great to be able to to offer to have people learn some some signs. Really awesome. Thanks for sharing. Is this um is one of the Padlet uh, topics incentives? <laughs> it is. Yeah, I know it's it's uh, yeah. I would love to hear your your thoughts on incentives. <laughs> Well, I feel like we have this conversation every year, but this year I really did try to bring it back to literacy and books instead of cheap plastic toys from Amazon. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I want it to be fun. I don't want it to be homework and yeah. I want kids to actually truly desire the prizes. So what we ended up doing was just um, every week we're gifting or we're, we're doing a raffle for a local bookshop, a, a gift certificate to a and at where they have obviously a lot of books, like most bookstores, they have like cool journals or little toys or whatever the kid wants to get because they'll have a gift certificate. Um, we're lucky that our local bookstore is pretty generous, so they like matched our gift certificates, <laughs> so that's how we're able to get so many, but I was wondering if anybody else had any ideas about sort of literary incentives. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I, I know that I've heard from a few other libraries. I think it's that thing where it feels like when you work with a, a local bookstore, or I know I've heard some folks I've worked for like, like comic bookstores who will offer um, books to folks involved in the summer reading program. Um, and it 
it does feel like they're being very generous, but it's also like you're, you know, you're, they're also, you're supporting each other in it. Um, and uh, I think that I, I think that's a fantastic trend and just in general, that idea of working with, rather than just like having stuff that ends up, you know, in the landfill of the things. Yeah, of having, you know, working, having experiences and, and working with like local organizations um, and or if with its, you know, bookstores or have, you know, like raffling off um, uh, gift certificates and things like that. I think it's really great. So I have, um, I have a challenge, a beanstack challenge going right now. And I have 10 raffle baskets that were actually all of the prizes were donated from a buy, no buy nothing groups um, in one of the local communities. And let me tell you, these things are amazing. Um, the prizes that were that were donated, they're like pretty much all new things that people just had that these kids just didn't, they didn't want or they didn't, they weren't playing with. They were still brand new in the package. And then um, this is for a, an event I'm actually going, I'm actually in running, well, not running, but on the committee for, for tomorrow for Diverse Brooks. It's um, We Are All Readers. If anyone wants to check it out, wearealreaders.org. Let me just plug that a little bit right now. Um, yeah. And the, and it's in, it's running off of Beanstack and um, the kids had to read a featured author that was either going to be there live tomorrow or did virtual school visits throughout the um, past two months. Um, and they just got their virtual raffle tickets to put, put into these raffle baskets. And that's it. They didn't get anything like incentivized throughout, you know, throughout the two months. Um, and this is the first time we've done it. It's the second year we've run this um, little mini festival. And I wasn't really expecting much off of it. We have 136 people signed up in Beanstack and the lowest amount of tickets in a basket is nine. And a lot of it, we have books from the authors, we have gift certificates from businesses. And like I said, we, we, there are some toys, but they're not plastic cheapo toys. They're like, um, there's like a paint set, there's um, games, cause there's a game night basket. There's, so it's not like the little plastic TV junk from like Oriental training. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're doing. And since this is going so well with this challenge, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do the same thing for summer reading and just like, that's it. They're that's up awesome. on, top of the, yeah. on top of the books. People can see them. So that drives people also to sign up for the challenge too. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, there's so much good stuff in the chat. Again, I just if whatever you're putting there is not in the Padlet yet, please drop it in there too. Um, some One thing that was mentioned was read for bead um, and a, a couple other related things. Is there anyone who wants to talk about that? I've heard of it, but I, I have not done that directly. I wonder if someone could talk about it a little bit. And if not, that's okay. Just put it in the chat. Okay, in I'll, the I'll go. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll, so I just found out about Read for Beats a few months ago. So all of my ideas came from other libraries, but I'll actually show you what we're doing. Oh, excellent. So we're using Read for Beats and also the brag tags. Um, we're using the Find Your Voice theme. So these are our mm -hmm. brag tags. Yes. You can see we have a, a turtle that lives in our library. So we got the one with the little turtle on it. Excellent. So as the kids fill out the summer reading logs, we are using the ones from Canva, the little bookmark. Um, our kickoff day, we're having a local author come in. He's a storyteller. She's going to come and do some stories. All the kids will get a ball chain and a brag tag to start. And then for every, I think we're doing for every, 20 minutes that they read, they can come in and pick out a bead. 
I don't know if you can see them very well. Um, they're just a little out of focus, but. <laughs> they're just pony beads. Um, oh, nice. Like from the craft stores, just tiny little. We have different colors, clear shapes. Um, and then it might be every hour. I can't remember the exact numbers. I have the flyer worked up. But for every like four or five regular ones, they can bring those back and trade them in for a more fancy one. So maybe like a glow in the dark bead so that cool. over the course of the summer, they'll build this, you know, a necklace. Um, we do little um, like reading logs throughout the year for just different things. So for Read Across America Week, all of my kids that came in just for story time, they got a little Dr. Seuss log, but we'll just continue mm -hmm. that. They complete those reading things, they'll get more beads. So the kids kind of get to compete with the other kids. So they'll come in and they'll see, oh, well, that kid's got 15 beads. Yeah. Well, I, need, I need to get more beads than them. So, but I got the idea from another, uh, from one of the children's round tables. And they were pretty cheap. We got the beads from, Am um, the ball chains from Amazon and the beads, honestly, we had in our craft cabinet. Yeah. And even if not, Michael's has some, you know, giant bags. We've had people donate them. So it, the only, the real only cost was the actual brag tags. I think we paid like 20 bucks from a school life. Yeah, we've Thank been so doing for, the same. for sharing about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been doing the same um, similar program in Weathersfield in Connecticut for a few years now, maybe maybe five or six. And at first we weren't sure how popular it was going to be. Kids earning, they earn one bead for every 20 minutes of reading. And again, it's the pony beads, just like Shantae's library has. And then um, they can trade in 10 beads for special beads. And again, like glow in the dark beads or different shapes. We have letter beads and they get um, a special bead for attending programs. So trying to encourage kids to come into the library and attend programs. They love it. They absolutely love it. Um, it's fun to watch them put their necklaces together. And uh, some kids will put they just grab a handful of beads and put them on. Other kids have to have very specific and precise patterns, um, but but they do. They love it and they keep them from year to year. So and and again, it's the parents love it too. They don't have all those plastic tchotchkes taking up space around the house that everybody steps on or you know that just get tossed at the end of the summer. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been very popular. Thank you so much for sharing that. Really appreciate it. Um, so many fast, fantastic ideas. Um, um, I think we, um, does anybody else have anything they want to share? I think we want to maybe just talk a little bit about the, the day for a few minutes. Um, and uh, again, encourage you to keep, keep adding to the Padlet and connect with each other. That's, that's what this is all about. Um, it's a really I'm glad you all joined us. It's a really great way to start the day. Just like all, all this energy and ideas, it's fantastic. Um, and I just dropped the Padlet in one more time. Thank you. New people who come in don't see the chat before. So if you're just joining us, um, the Padlet is right in there. Thank you. Yeah, and um, I guess, and then we should, I know that you all received the, so the agenda, I guess we'll probably just talk a little bit about that and where you can find all of the resources. Um, there uh, are links to everything and for everyone who um, registered, you will receive um, the links to all of the shared documents, all of the PowerPoints from the presenters that they've shared. Um, yeah. What am I missing? Um, uh, so <laughs> oh, I, recordings I dropped, too, when the yeah, recordings so I, are available. I just dropped the link for anyone who this is your first summer summit, welcome. Um, yeah, but so welcome. for the sake of uh, saving our emails, because my eye twitches at this point when I get an email, it's just sad. We try to put all of the links in one spot. Now, I do know that what happens with um, Google Docs sometimes is there's a lot of people in there. So you might have to sort of like let it go and then come back. Um, but in this one link is a link at the very top to a virtual tote bag. Um, it has all of the PowerPoint presentations that are going to happen today. So um, 
if it helps you to sort of follow along on your own screen with a PowerPoint, you're going to be able to do that. And again, people can refer back to it after the summit is over and everything lives in one spot. You don't have to worry about losing anything. There's also an evaluation survey that we genuinely do read. Like that's why we yes. are starting off the day with um, a session like this, because we've been told time and time again, the value that folks have found from learning from other people from other states. So like, please put your suggestions in there. We read them and we use them. There are two tracks today. Um, there, we are currently in track one. This is the Zoom. This is the same Zoom link for anything that you see in that track one slide. We've got a couple of extra sessions. We didn't want to cut anything out. So those live in track two. One Zoom link for track two. You can bounce in and out. You can go work the desk for 20 minutes and then come back. Like all of this stuff is alive and you can navigate it as you see fit throughout the day. Um, the Padlet link is also in this file. So don't worry about closing the tab on your computer and never being able to find it again. It lives right here. And yep. Jonathan also provided some guideline links. So if you have it posted in the Padlet because you're not entirely sure how to do it and you're a little nervous, Jonathan has like is ahead of the gun and has um, put the guideline links in there for us. Um, we um, are also, once the recordings are all set, um, we're going to thank uh, Kara from Maine who's going to handle those recordings for us. They will also go in this document. So if you have to miss something because you've got to like go run and like your landlord showed up or you've got to go work the desk. Um, once the recordings are done, give us like seven to 10 business days. Like it takes a little yeah. bit to unload. It takes a while. That stuff. So like yeah. give us like seven to 10 business days. Um, <laughs> those recordings will also live in here. So really, if you only save one bit of information today, save this, the Google Doc. Um, yes. Because everything will live in there. And um, I'm going to drop it in again for the folks who are just joining us. And um, that way you'll be able to refer back later during the summer or like two years from now when yeah. you're like, what about them beads again? Who can I call? Oh, Shante. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know each other. I don't think I know. I don't think we've ever met. We <laughs> love doing this because you see people that you've never met. Yeah, before. I know. Did I miss anything? Other consultants? Is that it? Save, think, save the Google, save the Google sheet if you do nothing else today. Yeah, you know. again, I think that's it. Be kind to yourself today. There's lots of stuff happening, but you know, it it's um do what works for you. It's gonna it's all gonna be recorded. We have all the links, so it's it's there for you. Don't don't stress it. So we've been saying to each other <laughs> and we say to you now. <laughs> um, drink water. Yeah, water. drink water. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of about it. So the next session, everyone sort of take take a little bit, you know, stretch yeah. and things like that. Um, if you're going to join us for the next session, which is Girls Who Code, um, mm -hmm. you can, you know, mute and turn off your camera to stretch or go get some water or take whatever break you want. Um, and then uh, this is the same Zoom link for that. If you are going to go off to do something else and come back later, again, just make sure you have this link and um, we'll see you later throughout the yeah. day. We'll see you. Thank you for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, everybody. Really awesome. exciting. Awesome ideas.